if you don't make the pitch, you're not going to get the shark, right? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and I'm not here to say I'm here to join everyone's board, but it's just, this is what I do. I'm I'm involved in about 35 investments of mine, companies, and I sit on public boards as well as private boards, et cetera. And this is what every entrepreneur needs to do is building that team around yourself of experts. My name's Rudy Moore, host of Living the Red Life podcast, and I'm here to change the way you see your life in your earpiece every single week. If you're ready to start living the red life, ditch the blue pill, take the red pill, join me in Wonderland and change your life. Guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Living the Red Life. Today, I have a special preview for you with the man himself, Mr. Kevin Harrington from the TV show Shark Tank. He's a partner of mine. He's on the board. And this is a replay episode from one of our live mastermind events. Members pay twenty-five up to $100,000 to learn from Kevin. Kevin has incredible experience, worked with hundreds of businesses. I think he sold over 20 companies, built 20 plus companies past 100 million. Obviously, mass, mass experience. He literally invented like the video ad, right, on TV 25, 30 years ago. And now what you're going to hear is me interviewing him live where he breaks down how to create amazing ads, all his experience generating hundreds of millions of dollars, all of his experience from Shark Tank, working with hundreds and hundreds of brands. In today's episode, I couldn't be more excited to share this with you because this is behind the scenes stuff that most people never, ever get to experience. And obviously our members pay 25 to 100K to be in the room to learn this. And now I'm sharing it with you guys here today on today's episode. So let's dive in to my interview with Mr. Kevin Harrington. So we'll dive in, Kevin. So I think you know, like I explained, there's a there's a mix of experience and a mix of businesses here. Um, and, you know, one thing that I've always said, the key to success for me is experience. And you can't, you know, I always say, unless you invent a time machine, you can't really buy that. And the closest way to buying that is mentorship, right? And, you know, that's obviously part of the reason we connected is, you know, my my future and where I wanted to go was a lot like what you've already done, where you've you know co- built businesses and, and worked with a lot of businesses to help them grow strategically. Yep. And I mean, everyone that sat here today, even though it might not be as an equity partnership, they they're here for mentorship. They're here to shorten the learning curve, um, and they're here to you know progress through strategy versus guessing. Because I think you know, as you guys all know, we when we start out, we guess a lot right and we fail a lot and then when we get some strategy stuff starts to work quicker so uh my first question to you and it's an open question but with online businesses with selling products online right what is what are some of the key things you found are the difference between the successful businesses you've worked with and the businesses that don't normally grow whether it's traits from the entrepreneur themselves or the business right so um I want to answer that question specifically. Maybe it might be helpful if I took one minute, just a little background, sure. how some of this That's happened, okay? Because yeah. that kind of dovetails into yep. uh, the answer to that question. But um, I, I'm going to go back almost, it was the early 80s, almost 40 years ago, because this is 2002, it was 1982. Um, as a young entrepreneur, uh, I was sitting there and uh, wanted to get exposure to great opportunities and business deals. And um, and, uh, and at 40 years ago, the world of entrepreneurship was nothing like it is today. But I mean, sure. today, everyone here could be an entrepreneur like that. I mean, you can be a digital entrepreneur, you can find a product, you can go global. But 40 years ago, none of this existed. The internet didn't exist. I mean, I was sealing driveways. I was installing air conditioning and furnaces. It, is, it was my business in college. And, and I mean, these were ways to make money sure. as an entrepreneur. But I said, I need to be exposed to more opportunities because I don't want to be a labor-oriented entrepreneur because um, it, it's, it defined me in terms of how far I could grow, et cetera. So, so I started a business brokerage company. Yep. And this was uh, 40, 40, you know, 42 years ago, 1980. I started, um, I was selling businesses, pizza parlors, delicatessens, flower shops, manufacturing companies. And why did I do this? Because I wanted to see the trends in business. I wanted to see who's going up, what, you know, franchises were coming into town, opening 25 locations. Wow, this is a hot one. What's what's this all about, right? So I started getting in on the ground floor and partnering with 
entrepreneurs. And this was when I was, I would sell a business, but I would also say, hey, the, the, many times the, the person buying it didn't have all the capital. Yeah. I put a couple bucks in and own some equity in restaurants and manufacturing. And that's how I started getting involved in deal flow. And so, um, but it was getting the exposure to small business by being a broker because yeah. when you're selling businesses, you got the books and the records and all the the leases, the all the percentages, the food costs, the the uh, the, the the leases, and really what you see are the troubles, <laughs> the good stuff and the bad stuff. Yeah. As someone would buy a business a year later, run it into the ground, and I, f I find out well, what did you do? Oh well, you know I'm looking at your numbers. Well, last year you spent twenty thousand in advertising. The the guy that owned the business before you. And this year, that's all gone. You didn't know, oh, that was an expense I didn't want to have anymore, okay? Well, you just destroyed the business, okay? It's like, oh, I'm going to take 20 grand out of advertising, and that took 100,000 out of sales. And so it's like, I, th this was 40 years ago. I'm watching all of this. And so one day, um, I, I was watching, um, I just ordered cable TV. And in the early days of cable, you only had 30 channels. And so I've gone through all the channels. Does anyone remember that, by the way? 30 early days? Okay. So I see some gray hairs over here. All right. <laughs> but um, so I'm going, I'm going through my 30 channel package. It was ESPN, 24 hours of sports and, and, and MTV music, HBO uh, uh, movies, CNN uh, news. I get to the last channel, channel 30 is Discovery and it was blank, nothing on. So I called the cable company and I said, what's going on? And they said, oh, it's a brand new channel. It's only an 18 hour a day channel. They don't have a budget to produce 24 hours a day. So it's just gonna be dark for six hours. I said, every day? They said, yeah, every day. So I said, well, can I you know, buy that time from you, all right? So Discovery Channel launched their channel back in 1980 and they spent billions of dollars launching it. It was an 18 hour a day channel. I gave them 365,000 a year, thousand bucks a day for six hours of, I own 25% of their channel time for, for a, a, a very teeny little piece. And that was generating $28 million a year in sales for $365,000. So I then went from Discovery to Lifetime to Bravo to, and then we also went to Rupert Murdoch in England and Sheikh Salah Camel in the Middle East and the, uh, the TV Tokyo in Japan and all the Latin American channels. And all of a sudden we were selling Tony Little, Jack LaLaye, George Foreman, all these infomercials in a hundred countries around the world. And so that was the birth of all of this and it, it was just picking up that unsold time yeah. on discovery but if there's unsold time on discovery there was unsold time on pretty much every, every many other channels so yeah. and and so, so the key for me then was then getting good products and so that was phase two so once i got the channels and the distribution now i started getting the Tony Littles of the world. And, and I had to say, where do you find good products? Well, at the houseware show in Chicago, at the hardware show in Las Vegas, at the auto show, at the beauty show. I went to the golf show in Orlando, PGA golf show, 1991. And there's a guy hitting a golf club called the Medicus. It had a little hinge in it. Has anyone ever seen that hinged golf club, the Medicus, right? That you know, th th this was how I started getting mm -hmm. products and, and getting to the point of where I could test yeah. the ads, right? Yeah. So so I would find guys like, there, there was a, a knife guy, Arnold Morris. He was doing the Ginsu knife. I watched him, I taped him, boom. And that's that really was how the whole Tony Little thing started too. Um, Tony was, was a, a fitness guy and yeah. we just turned the camera on, captured his pitch and putting up put them up on television and up on home shopping network, et cetera. So, so that, that's what I've been doing for the last 40 years. And um, I will say that nine years ago, um, I, I had, we had built 20 of these businesses had done over a hundred million. Um, five of them had done over 500 million, a couple over a billion. Um, the Tony Little Gazelle, the Food Saver, many uh, great projects. And, and then I owned SCDNTV.com, SCDNTV Inc. And nine years ago, I saw handwriting on the wall. And I said, what's happening? Well, 
sales were starting to drop because mm -hmm. digital was taking mm -hmm. over. Yep. What was happening? Yep. What was happening is television, what, which was, I was the as seen on TV guy. My sales were dropping because television viewership was plummeting. It's down by 60% in the last 10 years. And you think, wait a minute, why? Well, it's pretty simple. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on TikTok, they're on the internet, they're watching Netflix, many fewer viewers on TV. So nine years ago, I said, boom, I'm, I'm selling it, I'm out. You know, because I, I saw our sales were going like this. I, I like to see sales like this. And so um, sold all the, as, the assets of As Seen on TV .com, As Seen on TV Inc., yeah, hand me that uh, at Celsius over there. One last last story, and then I'm going to answer the questions. Okay. Yeah, well, and I got a few points already. To, uh, to follow. So uh, I said, uh, you, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. And so I sold it all, and I said, what I want to do is advise and be part of helping companies because, you know, we've we, we've launched. I've invested in over a thousand projects, lost money on over seven hundred of those. So it, you don't have to win on everything. But it, you got to have some winners that yeah. take care of the losers, right? Of course, we had you know a plenty of winners that more than took care of uh, of those losers. But the bottom line is, my next move was to to invest in companies. I got on Shark Tank, started doing some of that, yeah. and all of a sudden, now I said th this was the very first company I joined this board nine. nine actually, it's now ten years ago. A company called Celsius. I've seen various people drinking it so i know how many have ever heard of this company celsius energy right i'm one of the founders of this company 10 years ago founding board member the 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 company was doing a couple of million dollars in business and it and they had a stock it was 10 cents then it went to 20 cents i got involved got a big block and and then we started pushing this company into big directions we we went with with fitness Instagram influencers and a whole different approach than many like the Red Bulls and the Monsters were doing. And make a long story short, the stock went from 20 cents to five bucks, to 20 bucks, to 50 bucks. It went over a hundred dollars a share. We built a, a mega multi-billion dollar company. It's a four billion dollar company to this day now from zero. And this is what I love to do is get in on the ground floor exercise my opportunities and options and and relationships and bring what i call a dream team to the table yep. and um and 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 that's why when I, and by the way i've got a condo a couple of minutes from here and i got a house over in st pete so i uh, you know when rudy and i got together i said Let, let's do some things and hang out with some of the right folks so it's great to be here thanks for having me now I forgot your first. Well, I got, I got, I got, put that in. I got some follow-up questions. So, so you know, I want to piece some of what you said and help these guys relate it. So, the first thing that was really interesting that I mean, you guys can take away is you found almost free advertising blocks and then cr use that traffic to sell products, right? Yes. So, so the modern-day version of that for you guys to apply is all the big influencers that don't do much of a monetize that you can pay a small amount about, you know, the equivalent of a thousand a day versus the billions it's spent, right? right. That you could use to sell your products. All the big Un blogs. Underutilized. Yes. As people cool and or me. Blogs, right? right? Big blogs that get millions of traffic that don't know how to monetize. Big YouTube influencers that are craft makers that they don't know business, but they get millions of views. You can partner with them. So everything you did, you know, all those years ago, still is the psychology of it and the strategy behind it still applies today. It's just on a different type of platform, right? And then I think the next interesting part was um, a lot of you guys probably don't understand the correlation, but you basically cre created the video sales letter, right? So we all watch video ads now. Who's, who's ever made a video ad? Good. And yeah. a lot of the foundation of the script. If you, if you guys want to see the best video ads in the world, go and watch HSN and stuff, right? Because they're scripted, they're crafted, they're split tested a bunch. Yep. I think it'd be great. Can you talk about how they create winning videos and yeah. ads? Yeah. I mean, so uh, this is this is great. I, I had um, built this. It, I, I, I talked about how I started this little company back in the 80s. And I started with $25,000. I built that into a $500 million company. We were public on the New York Stock Exchange. And, and 
um, having great success. Stock went from a dollar a share to twenty dollars a share. I had a boatload of stock, so had a chance to exit, sell my stake, and and so here this was 1994 when I did this. And the first phone call I got I, when I sold out, and I was free and clear. I had no non compete, which was very important. Okay, so. Um, First phone call was Home Shopping Network. And Home Shopping Network said, come on down here. You, you built the, this amazing infomercial business around the world. And so I came down and an infomercial is one product for 30 minutes and like a Tony Little infomercial, it would run thousands and thousands of times. Whereas Home Shopping, they would put Tony on and they would give him, you know, like a 10 or a 20 minute segment. And so th this was the beauty of, of what I got at HSN. We formed a venture. It was a 50-50 partnership between me and HSN. I moved here in 1994, sold my equity in the public company, and and now HSN puts 50,000 products on a year. And guess what? I, we would sit there in the in, in the room when at the green room when the, when the people with Tony Little's going to go on the air. So all morning long, there's been product after product after product. First one, let's say. We're, let's say we get in there at eight o'clock in the morning in the studio and we're watching. The first guy goes on for 10 minutes. He sells $20,000 worth of product in, in 10 minutes. That's $2,000 a minute, mm -hmm. right? 20 grand in sales. Next guy goes on, he gets 10 minutes. He does $1,000 a minute. He only did 10 grand. So two grand a minute, a thousand a minute. Then Tony Little would go on and he would do it. 10 grand a minute, $120,000 in sales or whatever it was, huge 10X what the other guys were. It's like, wait a minute, what was Tony saying that was so much more powerful than the others? Well, he had a pitch. He had, he had fine-tuned his pitch, right? Yeah. So now, me as a partner with HSN, I didn't focus on those first two that did 10 grand and 20 grand I focused on Tony Little that did 120 grand in that same segment. Yep. And now what was that product? Oh, it was called the Ab Isolator. Yes, okay. So Tony, let's do an infomercial on the Ab Isolator. And we did, and it did $350 million in sales. So so the yeah. point of, of HSN, HSN gave us a testing ground. Yep. And we would put dozens and dozens of products on a week and only follow up on the ones that really worked. And it's kind of like we all are in this business yep. of testing products. So I was going to say, what do I tell you guys to do every time you ask me, what should I do with this funnel or this? What's the word I say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's the most important thing because you, if, if it isn't testing good, it's not going to roll out good, yeah. right? So you yeah. have no sense spending good money after bad if it yeah. didn't test well. So Well, the, the interesting thing too is we talked a lot about the success of products, right? Yeah. But the thing you've got, got to also think is the facilitator of that platform, i.e. where it's hosted, talk about the revenue they generated by bringing eyeballs, HSN. And, oh, yeah. Right? So like, that's something people, I think, miss, that if you can now, uh, eventually as you build a big influence and a big sphere, and then you become the central platform for media or for influencers or for product, you know, that's kind of the next ascension after, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, we actually... We as, as with my partnership at HSN, we had great access to their millions of viewers. Mm -hmm. That was a great place to be able to do a focus group. I mean, we put Tony Little on with what we thought was going to be an amazing new product. It was this little gym that did 60 different exercises. And um, we invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. And Tony went on and just his first time out, just absolutely bombed. Second time, not much better. And, you know, it did work, you know, so we're not going to focus on that one. We took our lumps and went on to the next one. And so, but we learned from what we did wrong there. And, yeah. and so now what we ended up also doing though, yes, we had HSN's customers, but now as we were running all these infomercials, we had millions of our own customers. So yeah. we could send an email to our customer database with a new product yeah. and say, Hey, we've got something new. We, we haven't even put it out to sell it yet. You're one of our customers. Can we get some feedback from you? Do you like this? Do you, you know, well, a little more formal yeah. than what I'm talking yeah. about, but it was like a focus group. Yeah. And so yeah. we, we could do a, 
It, 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 we called it a, a test mm -hmm. before we had passed. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Before we go into the rest of this episode, I'm gonna interrupt abruptly and just ask you one big favor. I hope you're getting a ton of value, a ton of knowledge. I hope you're getting some breakthroughs from myself and the guests, and I want one thing in return. What I would love is for you to subscribe and leave a review. The reviews and the subscription grows the podcast. It allows me to bring you even better guests. It allows me to invest even more time and money into this podcast to bring you the latest and greatest, the best entrepreneurs, from around the world that are crushing life, crushing their business, and giving you all the tools, the mindset hacks, the knowledge, and the environment you need to be successful. So do me a favor, if you've got any amount of value from today's episode so far, or any previous episode, or any of the content I've done, it would mean the world to me if you hit a five-star review, give us your feedback on the show, the episodes, and subscribe and download. Plus, if you do that and send me a screenshot on Instagram at Rudy Moore Life, I will send you a bunch of my free training, marketing courses, sales courses worth $499. Yes, $500 worth of courses for a simple 30 second review. It would mean the world to me. Send me that screenshot. I would love for you to leave that review and I would appreciate it very, very much so we can keep growing this show and make it awesome. So let's get back into the episode. I appreciate you guys and let's dive back in. Yeah, and I mean, how many times have you guys guys see me do an Instagram story about a product or one email and then you never see it again. Think about it. Several times this year, right? Because it's the same concept. Whereas you see other things, you see a couple of emails and then a month later it's everywhere on your ad manager from me, right? So it's the same concept. And you know, I encourage a lot of you, even though you may have smaller followings, you don't need thousands of people. You can literally test it with 20, 30, 40 people and get generally when you have a winner like i teach a lot of you the winner is clear right did yeah. you see that like it's not kind of like oh this one's 10 percent better this one's 15 it's like duh, duh, yeah. duh, duh. well it was just like i said with tony yeah, yeah. Ten thousand in sales in a 10 minute twenty thousand, a hundred and twenty. it would be 10x yeah and that's like hey in fact when he did the gazelle it was the same thing we we did the, the target training videos we did the ab isolator et cetera, et cetera. And each one of these had had tested. But I, I will say another thing too. Um, the the very first time Tony went on with the Gazelle on HSN, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And the reason was it was very expensive, like four to 500 bucks. And it had looked like Tony was, it was just Tony selling it. It looked like it was for real fitness gurus. Yeah. And so what we had a chance to do with HSN was to go back and try something different. So so they gave us four appearances. The first one did fair and not very good. The, the, the next time Tony came on, we said, Tony, you need to have more fun with this. This is expensive. You know, let's get some music going. Mm -hmm. And so he came out the second time, brought some music, started having more fun. Sales went up. The, then we said, wait a minute. We're not connecting with enough of the people that are out there listening. Let's get Let's get five or six people live on the set, young and old, and showing how they're having fun and dancing with the music and everything. Yep. By the third time, we had almost quadruple sales. By the fourth time, it was huge. And now we had a grand slam that went on to do hundreds of millions of dollars. So yep. we also utilized HSN to create the pitch. And this is the same thing you do in digital, it's changing yep. your creative. Well, two things there, right? First time, it didn't succeed, but it wasn't necessarily the product. It's the way it was presented. Exactly. And then the second thing was user-generated content. A big part of what I teach, right, is I'm always on about user-generated content, and yes. that seemed to help there. Um, it was the same Tony Little, yeah. the same product, the same everything. We just changed how he addressed the people yeah. in terms of what the benefits of the product were, yeah. and then brought user-generated content on, et cetera. And it was... So, so the next thing that, yeah. that I think links to it is... You speak a lot about, say, Tony Little, who was successful over time, yeah. right? But how many products and people went on there? It flopped and you never heard about them ever again, right? And that's the difference here. The people that keep split testing, figuring yeah. out, pivot the offer, pivot the funnel, try new ads versus the ones that have one product, one funnel, it doesn't work. They live and die by it and then never succeed. I mean, that's, un that's an unfortunate part of the business. Yeah. I mean, HSN... They, they, they run 50,000 products a year that they 50, test, 50,000. And about 5,000 of those are, um, are, are mainstream. 
five hundred or grand slams. Yeah, you know, so it's a one percent, ten percent, one percent, ten percent. Yeah, yeah, and um, um, and then they make money on some of those other ones, but then, but they're they're constantly churning because uh-huh. if they put you on for ten minutes and you only do five thousand in sales. You're not coming back. No. Okay. Well, same thing happens at Shark, Shark Tank too. Same right? thing. Like same thing. Yeah. You know the percent of success that get a deal, then the deals that go through, and then even when the deal's gone through, that actually scales. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's so, it's, it's it's a tough situation. Yeah. So so let's dig into the entrepreneur. What are the traits of the entrepreneur that you've partnered with or seen that defines the successful ones and the non-successful? Right. Yeah. So um, you know, I I think that. Myself, when I started as an entrepreneur, I actually was afraid to hire and pay good people the right money. So, sure. okay, so I can tell you, I made huge mistakes in the early days. I, I'll never forget. I had a I had a fifteen million dollar business, and I said, my accountants, these guys were blown away. They're like, I, it, we did this in like eighteen months from zero. And they and I, my accountants were just like, you know, because we started with twenty five thousand dollars. Asking and, and we legal. kept turning <laughs> cash, right? I took all of our profits and dumped it back in yeah. inventory. Yeah. Well, we had such a low media cost yeah. that yeah. we were making big profit. Yeah. But we plugged it back in to more media and inventory, and and so um, my CFO, or rather my my accountant, said, "You got to get a really good CFO." And and I said, what, have, what do I have to pay that person? Oh, probably one hundred and fifty thousand. Now this yep. is going way back, yep. by the way. So that that was seemed to be like I wasn't taking a big salary out of the company. I was building a company, making millions of dollars, but I wasn't grabbing it and taking. I'm like one hundred and fifty grand. I'm not going to pay a CFO that. They said, well, what do you want to pay? I said, well, I don't think we got a budget for that. Well, I ended up talking my accountants into getting somebody at 80000 <laughs> to run a business doing $50 million. Like, It wasn't what I was doing. Maybe that guy at eighty grand could have handled what we were doing, but we were going to $500 million. Yeah. So I short-sighted myself. This guy screwed up so bad, literally cost me millions of dollars. And the accountants came in and said, you got to pay for the right people. Build yourself the dream team of people. And maybe you can't afford them, but you need them. And yeah. so I, I started finding ways to build a dream team without paying the big money. Yeah. And I'll explain how I do that. So, for example, if I'm starting a new company, like I just got involved with a cannabis company out of, uh, to, out of Vancouver. It's called Hollister. And it's a hundred million dollar a year cannabis company. And they brought me in to join the board. And they said, Kevin, we need advisory board members. This is the cannabis industry. So I started bringing on some great advisors. And one of the guys that we've signed and just put out the press release, his name is Bert Ullman. Bert was, ran Donna Karen. He ran a fat uh, baby, uh, what's the, uh, the the fat business? Russell Simmons and Kimora Simmons, what was what, what, baby, what? Fat. baby fat okay baby he fat. he was the ceo of baby fat the ceo of donna karen the ceo of fubu for hit damon john he's tommy hilfiger's partner in a company called star brands and they've got deals with jennifer lopez and this and that so now you might think this guy was making a million bucks a year on a salary i brought him in for zero dollars up front and a couple shares of stock okay so uh, this is how we build dream teams, right? I mean, we're, we're bringing on another gentleman. I can't say his name because he has it. We haven't finalized it yet, but he used to be the president of NBC, the broadcast company, NBC. And so heavy duty people. And by the way, they're going to be part of our new venture for no money down. Yeah. All right. And now we're public. So we add a couple shares of stock, but you can do this as a private company. And even rest also- there. Rev serious one. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I, the key thing for me when I was building these businesses after I've realized don't shortchange yourself and not get the right people, get way better than the right, get the best that you can get. And on that note, like some people, they'll, they'll I, I got a, a, an email from somebody that was moved here from Washington, D.C. five years ago. Started his company in Washington, moved here, had hundred some employees. He's like, Kevin, I've been following you 
I'm, I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm 26 years old. That was five years ago. And would you mentor me? And I, I'm, look, I'm sorry. I'm busy. I don't have time. I'm traveling 200 plus days a year. He said, yeah, but let, let me show you what I'm doing. He's sending me and he finally, he said, he's going to donate some money to my charity. He's going to, he, he hit upon the right pitch. Mm -hmm. I joined his advisory board. And this guy now has 200 franchises uh, that he's expanded with around uh, the country. And, and I, I don't want to take any credit. It's, it's his credit to take. But my point is, is that he got me, the shark, to be on his board of advisors. And if, if you don't make the pitch, you're not going to get the shark, right? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and I'm not here to say I'm here to join everyone's board, but it's just this is what I do. I'm, I'm involved in about 35 investments of mine, companies, and I sit on public boards as well as private boards, et cetera. And this is what every entrepreneur needs to do is building that team around yourself of experts. Yeah. And I mean, partly these guys are starting to do that just being in this mastermind, right? right? And then, you know, you hire staff, you bring in maybe agencies on rev share or percent. And it kind of, as the business grows, it then leads to a position where you can maybe give shares and equity and bring in partners as you exactly. need it, right? So. Yes. So what about, let me ask this though, so the partners that you've partnered with for Shark Tank and all the years, what, what, what have you seen in your partners, the traits that have made the successful ones successful? Well, so one of the things that, that I love about where I am now, I, I used to be the CEO of a lot of the ventures that I yep. was running. Yep. So I was CEO of As Seen and TV Inc., CEO of As Seen and TV .com. We had thousands of products in a hundred countries the whole these languages it was like you know we had you know hundreds of employees driving me freaking crazy i mean we had an office in london an office in tokyo an office in sao paulo an office in Jeddah, saudi arabia and and it's like this global business and yep. so sold it all and got out and and now as an advisor um i i don't have to run anything so so that's that's a good yep. thing so it allows me to be able to focus on what i want to focus on but also um, to be able to give good advice to the entrepreneurs that that I that I get involved with. So um, Brandon Adams is part of my team over there. Brandon, to say hello. And so Brandon, you know, is as 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 he follows me around as we do our our different uh, things. It it he he is part of the dream team because Brandon helps put on events and Brandon helps connect into digital. So for example. Um, we, we just signed, we just took a big equity stake in a very substantial company that's in the business of erectile dysfunction, as well as other products in, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pharmaceutical company. And so we're, we're, there's, there's weight loss, there's erectile dysfunction, there's this, there's about four different categories. Who are we bringing in to do digital marketing? Rudy. And, and because Rudy's part of our dream team on the digital side. And so that's what I like to do is yep. to be able to have these alliances, alliances yep. with yep. people that bring really powerful things to the table. But because I'm not the CEO, I don't have the time. I don't have the focus. The key thing I need, and in in, you said, what do I look for in a good CEO? It's the ability to really focus on executing a yep. marketing plan. Yep. And there's, there's two parts of a marketing plan that I focus on. All my life, two numbers. Every infomercial we ever ran, whether it was Tony Little, Jack LaLanne, George Foreman, we did Kim Kardashian's first infomercial. It was, what is the customer acquisition cost, the CAC, the yes. CAC, and what is the lifetime value of that customer? And if your CAC is a lot less than the, <laughs> the lifetime value and you can make those numbers work, I mean, the Tony Little ab isolator was a, was a $40 item that had a $15 CAC and a, and a $40 sale, the product cost me three bucks. We made a lot of money, right? So we just said, how do we focus on, on you know, and, and our focus was every single day, customer acquisition yep. and building the value of that business and, yep. and the back end, and also the brand to be able to take then, build the brand so we take it to retail. Yep. So That's great. I love partners, like, you know, I'm. I have a, an equity stake in a, in a roofing business out of Columbus, Ohio. It's called RoofMax. And it's, they don't replace roofs. They rejuvenate a roof and extend the life of it. Because yeah, yeah. most shingles get brittle and crack after about five to seven years. Whereas RoofMax is a spray that impregnates 
the shingle and turns a brittle shingle back into a brand new pliable shingle as if it was brand new. And so this company went from zero to 600 dealers in the last four years. I now took a, have taken a big equity stake, but I, could, I do a two hour session once a week with these guys and now we're franchising and we're crushing it. But this is a family business. It's, it's two brothers and a sister out of Columbus, Ohio. Why do I love them? Because they focus every day, all day on selling more franchises, building that business. That's the only thing they do. And that's what I love as a partner. Yeah. Because I'm not the CEO, but I'm I'm bringing in all of the people yep. that I can. And there will be a place there for you at some point also. Okay. Right. All yep. right. And I would say, guys, put your hand up if you think you're pretty getting pretty good on the data side, measuring the cost for acquisition and focusing on improving it as a group, right? So one of the biggest things I think we focus on here is exactly that. Yes. And that wasn't set up, by the way. These guys probably think he said, because that's what we spent yeah. a lot of our time on, right? It's, You're not in was business, business you know, have those two numbers yeah. under control. Yeah, but it's amazing how many don't, right? Can you right. talk a little about how many $50, $100 million companies you come in and they don't really know it? They de definitely have no LTV or back end. Yeah, have no I mean, it's... It, it's mind blowing, uh, and this is why you know I I get involved. Uh, I'm on nine public boards, and they and and these mo the reason I got involved with all of them was because they didn't have any of these skills. Yeah, I mean these are companies that are they're public. They've got capital in many cases. I mean even Celsius in the in the beginning yeah. it. They had no customer acquisition strategy. It was just, they're going to just put the product into stores. And I'm like, guys, I'm a direct to the consumer person, right? If you can engage direct to the consumer, how did, well, why will people want to go into the store? They, they, you haven't advertised it. There's no budget to promote this product until we got on Instagram mm -hmm. with our influencers. Yep. And all of a sudden, boom, how many have seen these fitness Instagrammers on Instagram for Celsius. How many have seen that before? There's a there's tens of thousands of them now. So, and that's what took the company to billions of dollars. So, you you've got to put a marketing plan together and focus on. I mean, I'm a direct to the consumer guy, but that means yep. customer acquisition. So, who here spends time every day or week focused on new customers and the front end? Pretty much the whole room. That's when you say that's rare for a room. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because. It's, and then this, this, this is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And then the next yeah. part that's even rarer is who here is focused on understanding LTV and building an Ascension model. Put your hand up. Even rarer, yeah, right? That's great. So I'm not an educated group here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we try and good. That's great. Good. So, I mean, maybe anything else He's before we do. Yeah, no, no, I, I, maybe, um, the, I mean, I think, I, I, I guess. Just to summarize what I was talking about there, I'm, I'm a big believer, I call it, in building that dream team. Dream right? team, yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I've got, I mean, I, I was mentored by Zig Ziglar, and when Zig passed away, um, I did, I went to Tom Ziglar and, and said, you know, Zig was a, a great force in my life. What are you going to do with all the assets that Zig created? And so, um, hand me that, and I'll, sh I'll show you one of the assets. The Thank you. Yeah, my bag. And I, I said, why don't we take all the, uh, you know, all the assets that Zing created and, and, and re-release them. So like here is his, one, his famous book, Secrets of Closing the Sale, revised and updated Zing Ziglar with Kevin Harrington. Now, this book went back out into all the stores, a relaunch, and this is the, one of the most powerful parts of this. This is, part, this is a dream team play, right? How do you align yourself with somebody, right? So... Um, Zig, when he passed 10 years ago, had never done any social media, never had a Facebook page. But now that he had passed, his the daughters and Tom said, let's put up a Facebook page so people can give a tribute to Zig. Well, they did. Five million people are now following the deceased Zig Ziglar. So so here's a, here's the play as an entrepreneur. I went to the family and said, let's take Zig's assets rebrand them with some added content 18 new chapters from the shark and how are we going to sell it to the five million people that are following you on facebook okay yeah. that's the first place we're going to start yep. and then into bookstores etc so i like aligning myself building my brand utilizing other brands i mean much like 
we're doing right here today. It's yep. Rudy and Kevin, right? We're we're powering the brand building experience here. And so what am I doing with my companies? I mentioned Bern Ullman, so now on a board of advisors, and we brought Tommy Hilfiger on a board of advisors, and we're bringing the president of NBC onto a board of advisors. So, yep. so create your dream team, build your dream team, and, and, and that is one really cool way to have some great mentors and advisors in your business. So last question before we do public Q&A. A lot of the guys here probably understand that, but they think they're too small or too startup to right. do that, right? Because yeah. I think that was my perception when I started out. Do you guys feel that a little, that like it's harder to do when you're not successful, right? Or you're like starting to get successful. So any tips or advice on how they can start? You know, uh, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I, I, I was trying to get uh, a gentleman that I couldn't get through to his secretary. No, no, you know, it's like I just, you know, was like really getting frustrated. And then... I found out uh, the guy lived in New York and hung out after work at certain places. So I knew where he went for cocktails after work. So happened to be sitting at the bar one night when he happened to be there also. And man, did I get a great pitch and close the deal. So uh, it, it might be something like that. It might be at a charity event. By the way, I do a lot of deals on the golf course, and I, 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 I'm not a good golfer, but I, I love to play, okay? So For the key, I get, the key that is the creative. Is get, creative. get creative. People, I mean, people, I, I was at, I, I don't know if you were with me when we were playing, but the pro, I'm on the eighth hole a couple weeks ago, and the pro comes out. Kevin, sorry to bother you. It's a guy that's staying at the hotel. We, he heard you were playing. He just had to say hello and shake your hand. And he came over, shook my hand, and I'm getting ready to shoot. And and I gave him my email, and now we're talking. Yeah. Okay. So it's just you, you got to go for the gusto. Yeah. I mean, for less scared right. of doing that, right? You know, I mean, char- what, what? charity events, yeah. Yeah. at golf events, yeah. at restaurants, at you know where. But it's not always easy getting in through the through the sure. assistant or yeah. you know. What, you know well, and it's the most easy now because a lot of these big you know speakers and celebrities. They speak at the events we go to. Yeah. So you have to still be creative when you get there because everyone wants to speak. To yeah. You. But you can make it happen. Like you see at big events, if there's a big famous speaker, they they step to the side after. And most of the time, if you're quick and creative, you can get yeah. 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Right. Them. So exactly. it's now, I think it's easier now than ever to to meet those people if you're proactive and yeah. creative about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 